Welcome, I'm from the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and tricks that you can do on this device. So we're gonna begin with the probably most common one which is the dark mode. So we can quickly access it through the notification panel right here and when you tap on it it will turn all dark. As you can see the background uh, in most places where it's all empty it just turns black. And uh, apart from it looking a little bit more sleek, I guess, um, and probably not burning your irises out during night, it will also save battery because any kind of black background, fully black, was, well, won't be actually lit up. Uh, so the device won't need to waste the battery to actually light up that area. Uh, so in the notification panels, you can see anything that is fully black is basically turned off pixels. So the device isn't actually being turned on in this area until something is being displayed on it. So I won't need to, in return, waste so much energy on lighting up stuff that well, isn't necessarily well, basically nothing. Now this also dark mode extends over to different apps, so you can see phone, uh, messages, and basically settings. A majority of the preloaded apps will have dark mode now. Uh, other than that, apps that you have installed will... Well, some of them might support it, some of them might not. That just depends from the developer of the app. If they decided to implement the Android 10 dark mode or not, or they sometimes also have their own dark mode that you will need to di disable or enable it through settings of the app itself. But that is completely, um, com completely dependent on the developer of that app. Now moving on to the next one, we're gonna go into the uh, screen mode. So by default it's set to Vivid, I believe. Let me quickly see. Yeah, it definitely looks like Vivid. So for instance, like this YouTube, as you can see the reddish, uh, it's, it's literally saturated to the point that it's hurting my eyes almost. Um, and I would rather have it more natural color. Now this is completely up to preference. Um, so to change it, we can go to, that, to the uh, display section and from here, screen mode. You can see that it's set to vivid, but we can set it to natural. And this will reduce the colors and make it a little bit well, more natural. As you can see, you can also disable and enable it here just to see the difference in the image. And the difference is quite, well, drastic, I would say. Maybe not so much on the camera, uh, but on the display, it is quite visible. Now, vivid, in my opinion, is just way too saturated um, and unrealistic, almost. In certain cases it will look good, for instance like this scenery right here uh, with the Aurora Borealis. Uh, this will look way better with the Vivid, um, but other than that there's a lot of other things that just don't look too good in my opinion. So moving on to the next one, it's going to be just a simple gestures. Now by default we have these buttons right here and probably all of you already use gestures, um, so if you really like them. I suggest enabling them through the settings so we can find them under the navigation bar also under the display so display navigation bar and right here at the full screen gestures enable it as you can see it turns into this uh, pill almost that you can swipe up now the basically quick guide on using these now you swipe up uh, to go home, swipe up and hold to go to recent and swipe from the side to go back. As you can see when you swipe back, you can swipe it from either side and when you do there is this arrow popping up to indicate that this will go back. So just a nice way of, uh, way of navigating and it will also uh, move the icons right here in the dock a little bit lower to accommodate the uh, lack of the buttons that were previously here. Um, and apart from that, in my opinion, it just looks a little bit cleaner than having the typical buttons on the bottom. So, moving on to the next part, it's gonna be the split screen. So, obviously, you can go into the recent, tap on the button and open in split screen view. Now, in this mode, we can have two apps open, as you can see, and you can remove the line to basically change which app takes more space. Uh, apart from that, probably not the two best app, uh, apps that I have chosen for this. In my opinion, probably the best app to open in split screen would be something like YouTube and Chrome. 
which will allow you to, for instance, listen to music on YouTube while doing some other stuff on your web browser. And it does work really well in this aspect. So if we go into split screen, I just go with settings so I don't have to open up uh, Chrome. And as you can see, you could normally play video right here and do other stuff on the uh, settings or web browser, whatever it is. And apart from that, if we go into the recent, we can also do something like the open and pop-up view. So this is the next thing that I want to show. And can we size this window if I can actually hit that little... There we go. So once you grab it, we can resize it to a smaller shape, as you can see. Um, we can also add multiple apps to it. We're not limited to only one. I think I just opened twice the same one. So there we go, there's two. Let's open up something like, uh, let's go with Chrome finally. So if I move this out of the way, there we go. So we have Chrome open, uh, YouTube, then we also have our messages, dialer. As you can see, you can move them around and all of these are fully usable. And there's also, I don't know if there is a limit, uh, previously I opened three of them and they were all running fine. Right now we have basically four different apps open at the same time. And it allows you for, well, for greater multitasking than we previously had with just the sl split screen. Some people may argue that this is a little bit of an overkill, but apart from that, it allows you to do something like this, which is have an app head and you can come back to it whenever you want while you're doing other stuff. When you swipe up, it minimizes to this app head view. So moving on to the next one, it's gonna be the side panel, which on the camera, I think it's not very visible. If I maybe switch it to the side, you can see it, a tiny bit of it right here, but it's this side panel that comes with the majority of these Samsungs and you can just kind of like grab it and get it out and there we go. Now, <coughs> by default, before there were uh, different pages that you had, Right now it looks like it just opens up the most recent apps or most used ones, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but you can tap on the button right here uh, to add additional pages. You can also tap on the pencil to add different apps if you want to have more apps in here. Uh, add a quick access so you can just swipe up and at any time and open up app from here. But let's go to the settings where we can add different, uh, oops, different pages also. So as you can see, and this is the one that we have, just the apps, but you can add things like live messages, people, smart, tasks, weather, tools, reminders, clipboard. So this is just the ones that come installed on the device that you can choose from. And probably one of the more useful ones, in my opinion, is the smart select. So it will create this little window right here and you can select, um, it's basically a screenshot, but with more uh, control over it. So as you can see, the first one will allow you to select a specific area of the screen before you actually capture it. Uh, below that you have an oval, so it allows you to create uh, a circle of a screenshot instead of the square ones. Uh, then we have GIF, so just an animated, and also pin a part of the screen to the display. So and this one would be in a way useful, for instance, if you're doing some kind of like gameplays or stuff like that. You can, for instance, capture a photo or just take any kind of thing in a circle, slap it in a corner, and it will just stay there on top of everything. It won't change, and then you can record it if you want, just as an example of what you can do. Now, as you can see also, there is Galaxy Store, and when you tap on it, assuming I am connected to Wi-Fi, which looks like I'm not. So let me quickly change that, and I quickly connect to it, and Hopefully I insert it correctly, there we go. So now let's go back. Um, let's pop out the tray again and go to settings. So I want to go into the Galaxy Store now and agree to everything that it pops up with. You can see that we have way more. Now, unfortunately, it looks like these are paid actually, um, even though it's, they're not very expensive, honestly, at least for the most part. Uh, like this one costs about a dollar. Uh, this one costs more than a dollar, but it looks like this one will be one of the more useful ones, honestly. It allows you to split screen automatically with different apps. Um, unless you can do that without it, that would be also nice. But yeah, as you can see, this is free, this is paid. So once you find one, it might be paid, it might be free, it's completely dependent. And also some of them might be a little bit more usable. 
uh, rather than others so it is completely up to your preference and what you're looking for um, but as you can see there is a quite um, wide array range of different apps that you can get from here from just the side panel itself so moving on from this let's close this we're gonna move to the video enhancer which allows you just to add a little bit more clarity to your videos and the change it does is quite minimal but still for some people it might be fairly nice touch so let's go into the settings and from here we're gonna go into the advanced features right here scroll down to video enhancer tap on it and as you can see it shows all the apps that are installed right now that are supported by it and also right on top you have the on button so watch for the image right here that's how it looks like without it and when you enable it it changes so as you can see it adds a little bit more uh, light to it so a darker shadowy area a little bit more clear to see um, while still not overexposing the entire image like I said it's a fairly minimal but for some people it might be a nice touch to viewing experience and this is only working in the provided apps as we've seen right here so right now for me with the ones that are installed it will be video player YouTube and Netflix and that's about it now there is a chance if you install more apps they will show up here and be supported by it as well but because this phone has basically nothing it's only showing the three apps that I have now moving on to the next one which I find also personally really useful especially on devices as big as this one uh, it is the swipe down for notification panel now by default if you realize you probably swipe up you have, no, you have the app tray you swipe down you also have the app tray seems a little bit redundant one of the swipes so we can substitute the swipe down to be notification panel so and and this way you won't have to actually reach all the way to the top to pull down the notification panel and just helps a little bit more with navigating through a device without doing any kind of severe hand gymnastics to reach straight to the top of your display i'm gonna disable the dark mode for now so to get it enabled we will need to go into our home screen settings and you do this by simply holding your finger on the display it brings you this view and from here tap on home screen settings and here we have swipe down for notification panel enable this you can simply close it now and as you will see if i now swipe down from basically as low as i can it opens up the notification panel so i don't have to go from all the way to the top all the way top to pull down the notification panel i can do it from basically anywhere on the page as long as i just have enough space to slide down it makes this experience so much better considering the one UI allows you to not actually need to reach all the way to the top for the toggles because they kind of get moved down as you can see right here so the experience is a little bit more improved because of the one UI of Samsung and moving on to the next one it's gonna be the side key now Samsung started calling it side key and jamming it Bixby because people I guess weren't very happy about having additional key that they couldn't change so they substituted the power key with a Bixby but unfortunately or fortunately we do have the ability to change that back to a power key if you want to get that back some people for instance like me uh, don't use Bixby I don't really care for it I don't really want it and the fact that I have to press or when I'm trying to press the power key and it brings up Bixby instead of my boot options it does uh, kind of infuriate me a little bit uh, now I know that I could press power key and I think it's volume up to get it or just get it from the notification panel but still I'm just used to having the power key function as a power key uh, without actually needing to change the name for it to call it side key because we have such an idea so to get it back all you need to do is go into the uh, advanced um, advanced features right here and right at the top you have side key and from here you can change it right here to power um, for the power off menu now before i change it i will show you that if i hold it it will bring up the uh, undesirable bixby that i just hi, I'm hi no one cares as you can see this is the uh, bixby that i don't really care for and now if we switch it up and i hold the key again it brings up the beloved power menu which i'm used to actually Apart from that, you also have the double press options right here, and by default, as you probably used to almost on every other device, it launches camera. 
but you can change it to all, do the thing that no one cares for. Um, probably not very no one, but I personally don't care for, which is opening Bixby. And also you have the other option, which is more uh, enticing, which is opening apps. And when you tap on it, it will open up the app tray with all the apps that are installed on your device. And from here you can choose an app that you wish to open up by double pressing. So this will override the opening camera. And if I, for instance, select something like Chrome, I lock the device, I double press it, it automatically opens up Chrome. Now also you can do that by simply having the phone unlocked as well. And it does the same thing. Um, but the downside of this, um, comparing it to the camera, when you have a protection on your device, so pin, pattern, password, fingerprint, whatever it is, um, when you open up camera, it actually opens it up and you don't have to verify anything. But when you choose a app, you will, when you double press it when it's locked, it will go to lock screen before it opens up that app. So that is a little bit of a downside of it. And the last thing that I wanted to mention would be the uh, 120 Hz display. Now, if you want to preserve as much battery on your device, uh, I would suggest to turn it off, but if you're paying $1,300, uh, I would probably want it on. That's just personally me. And also, I really like how 120 looks like it's super smooth in terms of uh, well, when you're scrolling up and down and just opening up things it looks really nice now unfortunately this won't be visible on the camera because camera is recording at only at 60 anything past that is not visible on the camera so that's uh, something that well you've probably already seen because it's by default enabled so this is more for the people that want to preserve their battery now you get it you turn it off if you want to by going into the display and from here, I'm gonna go down to, there we go, uh, motion uh, smoothness. As you can see, we have the 60 and 120. It also gives you a little bit of an animation on how it looks like side by side. Uh, and by default, like I said, it's checked on. Now it's right here, selected on adaptive. So get smooth animation and scrolling by automatically adjusting your screen refresh rate up to 120 now i'm not sure if it's uh, just kind of switching it up on and off whenever it needs it or not uh, or if it's just uh, all the time because the adaptive kind of seems counterintuitive but it can go with standard which is the typical 60 so this is the slow that will actually uh, keep your battery a little bit well you'll get a little bit more battery out of it now just to mention this probably won't be anything drastic you won't be getting twice as much life out of it it's probably like an hour to two hours maybe max so don't expect anything like mind-blowing out of this one and personally i think i would rather have the 120 rather than the additional hour of battery that it will bring with not having it but this would conclude all the tweaks and tricks that i wanted to share and if you found this very helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching